Times are good at Weddington Swim and Racquet Club. We are busting at the seams. But sometimes when you grow, you have growing pains. The court crunch on the tennis side of the club has gotten bad and we definitely need more courts. So it's likely that over the past few months you've been party to a conversation about new courts versus tennis bathrooms. We've not done a good job of communicating the plan. That's precisely why I've made this video. If you don't know me, I'm Mark Knowles. I love this club. I love what it does for my life, the people it allows me to get to know, the exercise, everything. I've also served on the board for the last five years, responsible for men's tennis. But back in 2014, I was asked by then club president Janet Garvey to chair the strategic planning committee. Strategic planning is the topic of this video. Here's the issue. All of the board members want to do what's best for the members of the club. We just have differing opinions of what the members want. And I'll be honest with you. I've spoken with a lot of members on this topic, building more courts versus building bathrooms on the tennis side of the parking lot, or doing both. And members have a wide variety of views. But in these conversations, it's become crystal clear to me that in order to have an intelligent, well-informed conversation, we need to first create a foundation of fact. So by the time you reach the end of this video, you should have those facts. Then we're gonna need your help. If you have an opinion, the members of the board would like to hear it. At the end of the video, I'll cover the best ways for you to do that. So here's what I'm gonna cover in this video. One, the basics, our property, our membership, and our finances. Two, the outcome of the Strategic Planning Committee of 2014. Three, the vision for the Tennis Bathroom Pavilion. Four, the vision for Tennis Court Expansion. Five, moving forward with anything and the town of Weddington. Now, if you're a member who uses the club almost exclusively for the pool and you're thinking, gosh, there's really nothing in here for me, hang in there. The plan benefits you also. Let's start with an overview of our property. In this Google Earth map, you can see our 13.75 acres. Our unimproved acreage is about five and a quarter. But as you can see, we have this really odd shaped parcel. The big picture plan is to consider a bathroom pavilion here, additional outdoor courts here, indoor courts, and a first-rate exercise facility here, an indoor pool and or expanded pool parking here. Presently, our septic field is here, but Union County has confirmed that if we wanted to move it, acceptable soil conditions exist way back here in this stand of trees. That could open up space for potentially two or three more outdoor courts. Our membership. For the first time, our membership has reached our capacity of 540 member families. We currently have six on the waiting list and that number is growing. The pipeline from new construction in the area is very promising. Hundreds of new homes are going up in the Weddington area and several builders have approached WSRC about including membership in their new home sale. Our membership is generally distributed one-third pool, one-third tennis, and one-third both. Our finances. WSRC is a federal nonprofit, a 501c3. The vast majority of our operating revenues come from membership dues currently at $810 a year with an initiation of $1,500. And we have several payment plans to choose from. Dues are generally increased every two or three years to keep up with inflation and market rates. Now I want to stress, we're not planning any across the board dues increases or assessment to pay for anything covered in this video. We expect to maintain our historic trends. Some future projects like exercise facilities or indoor courts may include additional elective fees. This could change, but as of now, there have been no proposals for dues increases outside of our historic trends. Other revenues come from ballroom rentals, pool guest fees, and a haircut percentage charged for private tennis lessons. In 2010, before the last court expansion and some other improvements, we appraised for approximately $1.8 million. In our mortgage refinance of 2015, our loan to value came in at about 50%. This new mortgage included three capital projects that I'll cover in a minute. Our budgets for 2016 were set based on a membership level of 500 families. I know many of you are financial professionals, business owners, or homeowners. In most cases, finances are about wealth building and planning for retirement. 
Not the case with WSRC. For us, it's about providing member services and managing risk. The club is owned by the members, but if it were sold or dissolved, the proceeds go to charity. So there are no owners or shareholders that are looking to profit from WSRC. We exist to provide swim and tennis related services to our members, period. That mindset drives our priorities, how we manage debt, and how we invest our funds. Two, the outcome of the Strategic Planning Committee. In August of 2014, almost two years ago, a small group of members selectively picked to represent both the pool and tennis sides of the club, reviewed prep documents, then met for an afternoon to discuss the club's long-term direction and plans. The committee discussed ideas, debated, and then voted on several long-term priorities. When the dust settled, these recommendations were made to the board in prioritized order. One, bubble the pool. Two, building remodels, including bathrooms and commercial kitchen. Tied for second, tennis bathroom pavilion. Four, exercise facility. Five, indoor courts. The board researched bubbling the pool and for a number of reasons, including the cost and the absence of a long-term lane renting tenant, decided to delay the effort. The building remodel was broken into smaller pieces, with the first being renovations of the clubhouse bathrooms. These were completed in 2016. The tennis bathroom pavilion has been designed and bid by six contractors and is essentially ready to start. More on that in a minute. The exercise facility is a tough one. We currently don't have the footprint for such a facility. As I mentioned earlier, including a first-rate exercise facility within a future indoor tennis facility is the vision. I'll cover an interim plan in just a minute. Finally, indoor courts. This would be a costly project and could require some creative financing. Now you'll notice that additional outdoor courts didn't make the list. In 2014 and even 2015, our court capacity was able to keep pace with demand. It wasn't until 2016 that our membership rapidly expanded and now we're having discussions, heated debates, and well, making videos about courts versus bathrooms. Identifying projects to focus on and then being able to actually fund those projects are two wildly different challenges. Our annual budget for special projects like new slides, sidewalks, golf court storage sheds, etc. don't come close to being able to cover the cost of the projects recommended by the Strategic Planning Committee. So how did we turn talk into action? As it happened, in 2015 our mortgage was scheduled to be refinanced due to a pending balloon payment. We were fortunate that interest rates were low. I proposed to the board that we consider identifying three long-term capital improvement projects and include those in the refinance, long-term improvement projects on long-term money. The board agreed and David Bowman worked his magic with the mortgage company to include three projects in the mortgage refinance. Bathroom renovations for $70,000, pool deck resurfacing for $57,000, tennis bathroom pavilion for $120,000. With the funding sources secure, these three projects and other more typical projects were added to our annual budget submissions in the October 2015 board meeting. David Bowman then consolidated all of the budget requests and in the board meeting of November 2015 presented a proposed budget for the 2016 fiscal year. The final budget was raised for a vote in the December 2015 meeting and was passed unanimously. This means that we have the money in hand for the bathroom pavilion. No money was earmarked for the court expansion because at the time, we weren't feeling the crunch that we do now. Okay, so now let's cover the vision for the Tennis Bathroom Pavilion. Following the proposals from the Strategic Planning Committee in the summer of 2015, the board was given a document with 12 conceptual designs for this facility. Everything from a basic outhouse plus to a multi-level facility with observation decks and more. Referring back to the list of priorities from the strategic plan, there was a feeling that if this facility could help us move towards other priorities in addition to just providing bathrooms, we should take a look at that. After much debate, a round of unaffordable quotes, and a redesign, we settled on this conceptual design. I've heard words like Taj Mahal and extravagant used to describe the design. Trust me, this design is intended to be functional and nice, but certainly not extravagant. The facility would have bathrooms, an ice machine, a cooler filling station, this would be to reduce the time and effort needed to prep courts every day, 
merchandise vending like tennis balls, wrist, uh, handle wraps, sunscreen, bug spray, and more. Drink vending, sports drinks, vitamin waters, etc. Comfortable seating for 36 to 48 people, more than double the goal. Newton, Newton. Newton. touchdown Carolina. Comfortable tennis viewing for courts 9 through 12 and 11 through 16. A TV mounted way up in the ceiling so we can have events like breakfast at Wimbledon, French Open, Australian Open, U.S. Open, uh, Panther games on Queen City Mixed Double Sundays, and for video review of instructional uh, tennis. <coughs> and this large storage room in the back. Of course, we budgeted for ample security cameras, motion lights, and any theft and vandalism deterrents. Members have expressed a need for a facility like this for a lot of years. Now, some reasons why we need a facility like this. From the pavilion on courts 11 and 12, it's a two and a half minute walk one way to the restrooms in the clubhouse. A round trip could take eight to 10 minutes. Adding more courts below eight and 12 exacerbate this problem. The current gazebo is a great place, we love it. However, it was built in 1993, renovated in 2009. And that was a time when we only had six courts. During busy times, it gets really crowded and loud. And with half the people watching tennis on courts one, two, and five, six, and the other half socializing, it would be great to have a place for the socializing 50% to spread out and reduce the noise and distraction on the players on those courts. Filling the water coolers with ice and water inside of the kitchen is a time consuming and strenuous process. Using the ice machine and cooler filling stations in the bathroom pavilion will shorten this time. The ice machine will also be a very popular item for members. We strive to have a top-notch youth tennis program, but we fail to provide even the most basic seating and viewing for the families of these youth. The pavilion will provide that. One of the best ways to learn tennis is to study video of strokes, match play, court positioning, and more. This facility is designed with the concept of enabling pros and knowledgeable members to put video on the screen and analyze it. This would even be a great place for a play site system in the future. We have the best tennis club in Charlotte, especially when you consider the value. Others like Blakeney and Providence Country Club are investing in tennis amenities. We should also. Believe it or not, this storage room in the back is critical. Let's move back over to the clubhouse for a minute. Continuing to renovate the clubhouse and creating an exercise facility are priorities. But what do we do with the storage room here in the middle of the building? And what floor space do we use for an exercise facility before we take on indoor courts? Well, much of the stuff in the storage room is either tennis or maintenance related. Just about everything except the office supplies can be moved out to the storage room in the tennis bathroom facility. Plus that small office in the front of the building that's typically used to store tennis balls and other equipment can be cleaned out. Once these two rooms are cleaned out, we have the opportunity to gut the center of the clubhouse and repurpose it into a nice welcome center and office, something all of us and our guests can be proud to walk into. The current office can be repurposed into a small exercise facility with ellipticals, treadmills, stationary bikes, and universal weights. The 450 square feet or more, if you absorb part of the hallway, could be available to all members 365 days per year. Now we should stress that this part of the vision hasn't been estimated or budgeted and is certainly not included in any financial plans. Right now, all we can say for sure is that the space becomes available to do something nice with. Beyond freeing up the clubhouse space, future ideas for the bathroom pavilion include adding a grill pad, adding a fire pit, 
adding a small tennis pro office adjacent to the hard courts, adding a hitting wall and quick start courts behind the storage room. To date, we've spent or committed about $10,000 of our tennis bathroom pavilion budget. Much of those funds would be lost if we didn't continue with the project. The vision for court expansion. So where would we put more tennis courts? The logical next location is below courts 8 and 12. We have to maintain space for a silt retention area to keep the construction debris from moving downstream. So one court below court 12 seems to be all that we can fit. Two courts below court 8 fit nicely. If we use the same configuration as courts 1 through 4, we would be about 35 feet inside of the property line. Beyond these three, a project to relocate the septic system, then use this space to add two or three additional courts could be a future phase. How much do tennis courts cost? Well, they're in the fifty dollars to $60,000 range per court with lighting, about $40,000 without lighting. Some of the variables include the amount of grading and fill required, the type of irrigation, and the type of lights. Moving forward with anything in the town of Weddington, our property is zoned as conditional use. That means that any expansions must be taken to the Weddington Planning Board for review and approval. Then, once approved, the Planning Board submits them to the Town Council for final approval. This process requires two public hearings where residents have the opportunity to voice their opinion for or against the project. Renovations within the existing building, like the clubhouse bathroom renovation and the pool deck resurfacing, didn't have to go through this process because they focused on existing improved square footage. As a rule of thumb, from the time we have a package prepared to present to the planning board, architectural drawings, etc., it would take two to three months to attain the approvals necessary to break ground. What that means is given winter weather, if we want anything ready before the spring tennis season, we need to move fast. Where do we stand? With the tennis bathroom pavilion, we have the money in hand. Architectural is 80% complete and mostly paid for. We have a contractor and a scrubbed, negotiated, and final affordable bid. We have a Union County septic permit. That project is ready to move to the Town of Weddington Planning Committee. Court expansion. We have estimates from two contractors, but still need details on grading and final firm pricing. Within a few weeks of effort, that project could be ready to move to the Town of Weddington Planning Committee. We do not have the money nor a budget line item for this effort. We could A, continue with the tennis bathroom pavilion as planned and delay the court expansion until we can secure the funds. B, proceed with the court expansion and delay, probably for several more years, the tennis bathroom pavilion and the downstream projects it makes possible. C, there's a third option. Considering revenues we have realized above and beyond the budget due to higher than planned membership, and taking into account some of the special projects money for 2017, about $50,000. I believe we are still about $100,000 short of starting both projects now and having them complete by spring. This would require converting more equity or creative fundraising. D, do neither and pay down our mortgage. So now you have the important details and some insights on the vision. Here's where you come in. If you have an opinion, let's hear it. There are three ways that I recommend for you to do this. One, talk to Mike Murphy and or a board member. Two, send an email to mail at wsrc.us giving your opinion. And by far the best way is to attend the annual all member meeting on August 28th at 3 p.m. in the ballroom. In this meeting, board members give their annual summary for their area and members are encouraged to provide feedback and input from the floor. Topics like strategic planning are perfect for this forum, and you are highly encouraged to intend. That's it. I hope you found this time to be well spent. See you on the courts. You know you make me want